Morning, Steve. Um, I don't think inflation, actually, you're probably going to laugh, but I don't think inflation is going to be a, a major, major problem. I, th I think there's a, a lot of sort of preemptive and, and premature noise about raising rates, particularly from the Fed, I guess, because they've, they've talked about speeding up tapering, then the next move after that is raising rates. But I, I still see inflation transitory as transitory, even as the Fed um, has, has dropped the wording um, from, from, from its statements. Um, I think inflation is coming from two places. Um, one is sort of supply disruption in Asia. I don't see any um, evidence that that's going to change. But the other place is the labor market, and that will change. America lost 22 million jobs initially when the pandemic broke out. But those jobs are coming back, um, and we're seeing that steadily, steadily over time. Um, and I think wage pressures will ease off in, in the coming months. And I think that, that will mean perhaps not a, a sort of a, a fall in inflation back to the old numbers of sort of one and a half percent. But I think certainly we're going to get lower numbers than 6.8 percent um, in the coming months. So the, the risk of policy error is relatively elevated. And, and I think that speaks to you know, why we're getting the flattening of the yield curve, which you commented on just a little bit earlier. But actually, what, what's happening is that the short end is going up because people are expecting a, a response from the Fed. But actually, the, the, the long end is falling because people are worried about what the growth impact of that is going to be. If we start raising rates into an economy that is still disrupted um, by COVID-19 and the Omicron variant, um, that, that could be a major policy error, that the, the world is still not ready for a higher rate environment. But Julian, I, I, I hear what you're saying about these six-handle inflation rates. And, and again, we all hope... Uh, those of us who saw the 70s, albeit as a very, very young person, that we don't have a return to that in any way, shape or form. But the fact of the matter is there is a huge wealth of difference between 2%, which is the target for these central banks, and the current levels, which are coming up with five, six, seven handles in some areas as well. They are still massively behind the curve, even if even if a vast amount of what you say is correct, and actually these energy and um, shortages and the food prices, even if that abates, we're still nowhere near the 2% level, which is the benchmark, i.e. we're still way above that, even if it comes off by dramatic levels. But, but ask yourself this, how is raising rates going to fix, for example, healthcare policy, public healthcare policy in China? It's not going to stop China from pursuing COVID zero with all the supply disruption that goes with it. So raising rates is not going to touch that. Raising rates is not going to bring people back into the labour market any faster. They're going to they're going to come back as they as they see the economy um, start to improve and they get more confident about the virus and worrying less about it. That's what's going to bring them back. Raising rates, I don't think, is going to help on either of those two fronts. It's yes, it's the only tool that the central banks have got. But, it, but it's just simply not effective for dealing with these particular price pressures. Julian. So that, that's, that's what worries me, is that they're going to use the only tool they have because you. they're under some kind of pressure about it.